Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Good evening everybody, Militia Man and Crew. Just going to get over a little bit of news today, it's going to be kind of short and sweet. Hey, but if you guys remember yesterday, uh, we talked about the, uh, I don't know, I was teasing a little bit, um, calling the, the Parliament clowns. and. And uh, sure enough, they turned out to be for that day anyway, but uh, being light. But to, hey, guess what? They're going to have another session. They're going to they're gonna try try again for Thursday uh, to get the, the uh, Speaker of the House. So we're going to see if they can pull that off. Uh, sounds like this. Uh, they had a little stumbling going on and some sandal throwing. Um, you know, they took them 11 months to get to this part. Uh, you know, they've been stumbling along the way, and it's, I had to laugh this morning when I woke up. I was uh, thinking about, you know, the clowns, and uh, when I saw that article, or this article that's out today, uh, t talking about stumbling, I'm, all I could think of was, um, the, you know, the, the circus bozos with the big clown feet <laughs> stumbling around. Uh, anyway, but hey, I wish them the best. They, they deserve, the citizens deserve to have a a government uh, with three presidencies. It's a, it's a constitutional right that, that they have. Uh, that's my understanding of it. So I hope they get it done. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, some of the laws that they had uh, um, that they were going to try to hammer out um, just didn't get through. Uh, one, of the, one of the articles we were hoping for was Article 140, uh, the, the law related to Article 140. Okay. But anyway, tomorrow there's going to be uh, personal status, general amnesty, Draft, uh, draft law for the military service uh, and a retirement of the Mujahideen popular mobilization. Um, you know, look, that's got some significant um, interest of mine because if you have uh, potentially, they may have something that they're not telling us and it, or they've done things that they just haven't told us because uh, they did meet yesterday. Okay, so they just um, maybe just didn't quite finish everything. So or um, if they, if they didn't get anything done, that, that would be surprising. But they probably had some things done and maybe kept some of that close to their chest because they don't tell us everything. So personal status, general amnesty, military service, and the retirement of the popular mobilization. And why is that? Well, why does it have my interest is because it has to deal with uh, cutting off a component of interference, outside interference, regional interference. And uh, one of their neighbors close by um, has one of the, has that, and that influence is probably going to go away because it had a lot of money laundering problems, a lot of anti-terrorist financing going on. Um, they had problems with the, the black market because of some of those folks. And you know what? Some of the theme that you're going to see uh, now is that if you're a hindrance, if you will, to the development road project, if you're a hindrance to the, the citizens' constitutional rights, if you're a hindrance to any of those things, um, which uh, delaying the House of Representatives is somewhat of a hindrance, uh, delaying uh, votes, etc., on the budget law, not being able to open the budget law, uh, things of that nature are probably going to be frowned on. So those parliamentary people uh, that have been involved in the black market and had any illicit behavior, when the new system comes through, the new electronic systems, they're going to probably have a little conversation with you when you when they ask you, well, where did you get all this money? How is it that you're so wealthy off of what your pay is? Um, that They're going to have accountability. And so you're going to see some of the things, talking about a new chairman from the Integrity Mission uh, Commission, new chairman and uh, Al Locke today. But here this article is a new session of the House of Representatives to vote on the floor of the controversial laws slated for tomorrow. That could be tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. I, I don't know. But that's but that's on the table. So and that precedes what? Uh, the appointment for Thursday. So here's a new political agreement to elect the Speaker of the Parliament. It says the presidency of the Council of Representatives will set a session uh, for what? Next Thursday to elect the new Speaker. Um, of the H Council of Representatives, and it looks like they have an agreement they've reached to resolve the issue of the presidency of the parliament before the end of the week. Uh, they basically identified two paths which they'll take, and I'm not going to get into the two paths because they're, it's, it's look, vote or don't vote. <laughs> get it done. That's how I see. So look, the coordination framework uh, has pulled together the Shia political forces. They have, they've announced uh, over a week ago that they support Mahmoud al uh for the presidency of Iraq's parliament, and they did that on the 22nd and the 23rd, and look where we are. 
Okay, but the session wasn't held. So obviously, we're going to see if this uh, show goes on starting tomorrow. Some laws, important laws that are on the table, and then the following subsequent, hopefully we'll have a president at some point in time. Um, what I would like to see personally is that al-Sudani and al Alak push ahead, do what they have to do prior to that. Um, then it would kind of expose some of those parliamentary people for what they did, which, which is to hinder the development road project. So let's see how it turns out. Parliamentary, parliamentary finance, uh, it says we are discussing the government's preparation for the 2025 general budget, and these are our observations. Uh, you can find this on patreon.com forward slash M-M-A-N-D-C-R-E-W. Come on in, take, take a view. Samson, she, like I said, she, she, she knocks it out of the park when it comes to uh, the amount of content that she brings in so that we can analyze it and get it out to you guys. That's what, the, that's what these articles are all from. Uh, don't forget, uh, say hello to Greg or Gigi. Gigi brings in um, and comp, does a compilation of Dinar chat that's with us and in our rooms. And I would highly recommend that you have the opportunity. You're going to get conversations from the crew and members um, in real time. In, in live and she brings in snippets of that stuff and puts it together so it's un easy to get through and understand for the day so check that out too and give her thanks because she works hard for that i appreciate all the work she does her and samson and all the other crew members uh the parliamentary finance wait a second it says here the uh, uh the parliamentary finance committee disclosed part of the joint meetings with the government agencies to prepare the new general budget law for 2025 and its tables that are related to revenues and expenditures. Okay, so this gentleman, Al Kazimi, states the, F the Finance Committee has, has ongoing discussions and meetings with the Minister of Finance, who's Tay Sammy, if you guys don't know that, uh, on the implementation of the 2024 budget items, especially those related to revenues and expenditures. As we have found that there's a reduction in spending and complaints from the governance and ministries about the weak actual funding of the spending units. I'll get back to that. The Parliamentary Finance Committee is working on formulating the new general budget tables for next year, 2025, in a realistic manner, away from the increases that cannot be guaranteed to be secured as has happened in the current year budget 2024. So there's some guarantees that were in the 2024 budget that may not be there in the same manner in the future. That's an interesting thought um, or concept. It says, we seek to have a general budget of 150 trillion dinars, distribute as oil revenues at 120 trillion dinars, non-oil revenues as 30 trillion, and the, so that the budget tables are realistic in which revenues can be collected and spent. Okay, Ministry of Finance goes on. It says the need to activate the revenues of the government departments. So there's a need to activate the revenues of the government departments, including the electricity, Baghdad and municipality, the municipal departments, and other services provided by all ministries, in addition to taxes, border crossings, revenues, and customs, as well as supporting the private sector in the fields of agriculture, industry, trade, services, and investment was emphasized. All of this will contribute to increasing the country's revenues in general, stabilizing hundreds of thousands of unemployed workers. Isn't it? That's huge, you guys. So think about it for just a minute. We we'll back up a little bit. It says the implementation of the 2024 budget items, especially those related to revenues and expenditures. Well, that's for the development road project. If you don't get that done, what are you doing? You're hindering the process. And this is what you're going to find that there's going to be some talk about that, um, that the integrity uh, commission is going to not uh, stand for it. And so those folks could have some problems in the future. They could have some legal problems for, uh, for not getting done what they are set out to do. And if, by hindering things, they could create problems for them. Uh, I think it's a critical time for Iraq. Uh, they have to basically, the, the new general budget tables that are on the table have to, for instance, the 2025 budgets to even get to this far, they've had to have the 23 and 24 budget final accounts taken care of. Don't you remember that? That was in an article just recently that we talked about. Okay, so that 2024 investment side of the budget, to me, because of that, by them saying that they're ready to do it and they have them and they're, they're doing it in a manner now, means that they probably have those final accounts taken care of. Uh, will those trillions that they talked about in dinar 
turn to billions, drop the three zeros. You, you take off three zeros from trillions, you get billions. So we're going to find out. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we should have to see, wait and see what the amendments were completed to get published. They haven't published those amendments yet. We know that the uh, budget 23, 24, 25 tripartite budget was voted on back in June of 2023, but they haven't finished the amendments for 2024, or at least if they haven't finished them, or if they have finished them, they just haven't actually exposed them in the publications yet. So we'll see if they get that done uh, any day. Now, I don't know. Should be. <coughs> okay, next article is the Parliamentary Committee. It says there's U.S. pressure on Iraq to resume exporting oil, uh, regional oil, via the Siam port, which is in Turkey. It says a mem member of the Parliamentary Oil and Gas Committee revealed Sunday that America's pressure is exerted on Iraq to resume uh, oil exportation through Kirkuk via the Turkish uh, Cyan port. Uh, resuming oil exports through the Cyan is the most important issue that is still pending, and the Kurdistan regional government has made great efforts with the companies to resume oil exports through that port, but yet not have uh, yielded any results. The federal government's under great pressure to resume exporting oil from Kurdistan and Kirkuk, and this pressure comes from the United States and the European Union. So uh, the United States isn't the only one pressuring them. Uh, given that the European countries need larger quantities of fuel in the winter compared to the summer, of course, it's going to get chilly there pretty fast. Guess who else is, is exerting some pressure? OPEC. OPEC. OPEC is exerting pressure at the Boss Report has now become the only route for oil. Iraqi oil exports. So they're, they're being vocal. Turkey. Turkey's expressed their readiness to resume the oil exports from the Kurdistan region, but Iraq has not yet reached an agreement on the cost of extracting the oil. So look, hey, we all know winter months in, in Europe get cold. They're going to need some oil. Companies are losing money in the billions by not put, putting that oil out of Cyan. You have OPEC, and I, I say whining about the port only being the only active exporting oil uh, port for Iraq. Uh, you know, basically, um, I have a feeling that the money is going to be the, uh, the key to Iraq's future and present reforms that are needing to get the 2024 inv investment side of the budget done on Pronto. So it is going to come down to, uh, if they're losing billions, the pressure is on. So all of those things and uh, put, it, put it together and you're basically looking at... Um, hoping that this meeting that we had today with Al Alok and the Integrity Commission uh, chairman yesterday uh, is a good sign, okay, that they have the legal side of things taken care of, where money laundering, smuggling, it, whatever that neighbor's influence, all of those come into play are concerned. Once they expose the rear real effective exchange rate, the likelihood that oil will flow again through the Siam port is probably highly likely. Uh, just as the hydrocarbon law will probably be on the table. Uh, because why? Because those are constitutional rights, and all the people that are uh, hindering the citizens get what they deserve, which is those constitutional rights, is going to be um, probably, you have, probably have to answer some questions. Why, why aren't you guys doing this? Okay, that's, Hopefully that's the case. Okay, so the next thing is, is that there was a, uh, an article called The Center of Banking Studies Concludes a Training Course in Herbal Branch. Look, there's a lot of people out there that have good um, relationships with Iraqis. Um, there's people out there that have relationships with uh, some of those Iraqis that happen to have uh, banking backgrounds. And they also have um, connections to those um, higher level posts some, that work for those companies like the central bank or entities. Okay. So in this particular case, what did they do? The Banking Studies Center in the Central Bank of Iraq concluded a training course entitled Certified Branch Managers. So this is top-down, branch managers. A certified trainer certificate issued by their professional development institute. So they're certified that they've been trained in something because they got a certificate for it. They have to pass a test, which they did. It says the participation of a number of employees working in the banking sector in Iraq. The course staff discussed with attendees a special program. So it's specific. It's a special program that includes training branch managers to obtain an accredited international certificate. An accredited international certificate. So they needed to be on par with international standards. Okay, the participants in the course thank the, uh, the efforts of the central bank in developing these skills, da 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 da. So, this article is interesting because it is telling me that they had a specialized program, 
okay? Um, and they would need to have perfection. They would have to practice. They would have to know everything about the ins and outs. And when you get down to specifics, when you have a specialized program, it's going to be something specific. And those folks that are involved, those managers, are the ones that are going to be in charge. In other words, they're going to have to te teach their people uh, or uh, be accountable for what they do and how they work. Well, Iraq's going through a financial transition. They're going to a digital world. Um, and if they do do bring out a real effective exchange rate, they're going to have a new currency. And one of the things that you're going to be doing, if you're going to be talking about, like we talked about yesterday, um, that the dinar is going to be a component. It's going to be a base currency, right? That base currency to international currencies when you're talking Forex. So the citizens, which is the people and their managers at the banks, they're going to need to know the ins and outs of what? Their own currency. I, I'm hoping that's what this is representing. It's got to be something similar because it's coming from the central bank. That's what they do. Plus, you know, rules, regs, da 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 da. But hey, knowing your own currency is going to be very important. Very important. So let's hope that that's what's happening. But they did that. They've completed it. And when did they finish it? They finished it, it looks like, yesterday. So I'm, I'm pleased to see it. So hopefully you guys understand that and get that. Okay, so the next thing is, is the Prime Minister stresses the importance of coordination to advance construction and reconstruction in Dakar. Okay, so why is this important? Well, it's Shia al Sudani. He stresses that there's an importance. He stressed the importance of the coordination between the executive and the legislative authorities to advance the wheel of construction and reconstruction in Dakar. Okay, remember the integrity guys? They're talking about uh, don't be careful with uh, construction and reconstruction, don't hinder things. Prime Minister's media office t uh, made a statement. Uh, it says that the uh, Shia al-Sudani uh, today uh, received a delegation of members of the House of Representatives in Dakar government, including the Honorable Representatives uh, al-Rakibi, uh, Ghanim al-Ghazi, and a gentleman by the name of al-Halali. So anyway, they, they talk about the advancement of the service and economic reality of the governments and improved services for the citizens, improved living conditions exactly what they should be doing says the prime minister stresses that the importance of cooperation and coordination between the executive and legislative authorities in order to support the development plans and programs to advance the wheel of construction and reconstruction in dakar provide more job opportunities and maintain security and stability in the government okay so you can see the theme is, is it's about taking care of the citizens it's about it's about you know legalities of it talks about what, what are we talking about we're talking about the 2024 budget what is that about it's about investment what is it about to serve the citizens see what i mean everything that they're trying to do now is to get towards gearing towards going to a private con market economy private sector okay a partnership with the public which is the government to do benefit the citizens article 140 hasn't been done why they're not doing it well because they're hindering it <laughs> are they going to quit doing that that's the hope are they, are they HCL, are they going to keep hindering it, Hind being a hindrance? <laughs> I don't know, but they're going to have to uh, make some big choices and quickly. I really think so. Uh, obviously that they're talking about doing four laws tomorrow and then Thursday, which in a couple days. Um, I'm, my hope is that al Sudani and al Alak uh, catch these guys with their pants down, being hindrances. That way they have to uh, get a taste of their own medicine, uh, for, take care of their citizens is what they should be doing. Integrity, the central bank stressed the need for concerted efforts of state institutions to prevent and combat corruption. So here's the integrity, here's the central bank, and they're talking the need for concerted efforts of the state institutions to prevent and combat per, uh, corruption. So they're now they're, they're getting it out and getting it large and they're making it war a warning sign. If, I, if this is where I go with this, I believe it is. So here it is tonight, uh, the chairman of the Federal Integrity Commission, Muhammad Ali Alami, and the governor of the Central Bank, Ali Alak, stressed this morning, today, or today, on Monday, the concerted efforts of state institutions to prevent and combat corruption and recover proceeds. Integrity Commission uh, goes on to say that the chairman of the Federal Integrity Commission and Ali Alak at the headquarters, they're talking about uh, wishing these what, well, first off, the Central Bank of, of Iraq governor, 
he congratulates this Muhammad Ali Alami on assuming his duties as chairman of the Federal Integrity Commission. So the guy, is an, he's a newcomer. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he was groomed for this and the timing of it is impeccable. Uh, but he's got the new job. He's the chairman of the Federal Integrity Commission. Al Alak is wishing the man uh, success in carrying out the great national mission, the great national mission of combating corruption and cleansing the state institutions of its filth. All right, those guys that are throwing sandals in parliament, not getting their job done for the citizens, I think they're probably on camera. Uh, so hopefully those hindrances go away. It says here that uh, Alami, uh, Al, Al Lami, sorry, the need for state institutions to combine their efforts to prevent and combat corruption, uh, to strive diligently to recover s smuggled corruption proceeds, in addition to focusing on preventative awareness raising, educational methods to prevent corruption, and spread and consolidate the culture of integrity among society. So this guy is looking and has some large uh, uh, goals. He's looking at the the everybody the state institutions and the public they need to be aware state institutions need to do their job and they need to do it with uh, respect and continuity to help with integrity among the whole society the commission's determination to continue efforts to combat corruption and prosecute its per perpetrators there you go you guys there's your warning prosecute perpetrators so if you're if you're doing things that are wrong they're looking to come and prosecute you for that okay the corruption hinders reconstruction Noting that corruption hinders reconstruction, it hinders development, investment operations, and it contributes to the decline in services provided to the citizens. I told you from the beginning, this is where we were headed. They're going to try to go after and get everybody online to, to get this thing over the edge so that they can push forward and uh, build a better country and the citizens will benefit from that. It's about time. After what, darn near 40 years of war? It's ridiculous. So, uh, two parties agreed to intensify levels of cooperation and coordination, co coordination between the authority and the central bank, especially in the file of money laundering, smuggling, and they stressed the sanctity and the inviolability of public money and the importance of doubling efforts to preserve it and recovering what was stolen. So, in other words, those guys uh, high up that have happened to have like billions of dollars and in income and real estate to the hundreds of billions you think that they're not going to be eyeballing you so when they say they go to electronic digital platform that uh where'd you get the money you can, you're gonna have some problems you guys <laughs> and those clown suits aren't going to work for you but <laughs> i'm telling you okay so anyway it says recovering what was stolen from embezzlement uh, smuggled out of the country right so you got a smuggling you know, where'd that money go from the auctions, everybody? Yeah. So this is a very good sign that there's a focus on the corruption. All of those politicians that are not doing their jobs are going to have a problem. If they have stolen money and assets that, that do not fit their pay grade, uh, they're going to have some explaining to do. That's how I see it. If they're hindering sanctity and in, in the inviolability of the public's money, uh, they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have more problems. At this stage, if the, poli if the political hindrances that affect the ability of reconstruction, development, investment operations, and contributes to the decline of the citizens even more, they're going to have more problems. That's the way I see it. This new electronic system that they have in place will find corruption fairly, fairly quickly. Okay, the digital world's going to rock some people's worlds, as far as I can tell. Uh, they, they've never even dreamed of because this is a newer system and how fast they can track things is going to be uh, probably mind-boggling for some of them. I, I put it at this way, it's going to rock some people's worlds. I wouldn't be surprised if Iraq's reforms that Al-Sudani and Al-Alaq have on the table would now be considered uh, by this man as a chairman of the federal integrity position that he is now in. He's, he's going to be the guy that's going to help them and I'm sure that's why he's talking with a lack so you guys look this is a critical time I wouldn't be surprised like I said this guy at a critical time probably had been groomed for the role that he's about to take uh, especially because of the financial situation basically what, what is Iraq losing they're losing billions a month billions and so hence what, what are we talking about why aren't they pumping oil out of the cyan 
supply. Well, I think that's probably because they need to value the assets, like I've been saying, the assets, which is oil coming out of the ground. They, they have some things that they need to resolve as far as the pricing is concerned um, in those contracts. But the bottom line is, how much are we talking? What is going to be the component of that base currency that they talk about? What is that base currency? The Iraqi dinar, if it's going to be a base currency, what's the real effective exchange rate? And that's those budget tables in 2024. That's what I'm looking for. I don't know about you guys, but that's where I'm looking. You haven't seen them yet, have you? But they did say, like I told you, they said that they would go to the 23, 24 final accounts, and then they would move to 2025. Well, they, they just implied today in what I just showed you, sh shared with you, forgive me, uh, that they have that, and they're gearing for the 2025 budget tables. They're going to be different. They're not going to be guaranteed like the 24 is. So therefore, what they've done already because of the law, they're going to have those amendments. We just need to see them. And I think that's where we're at today. I think we're going to see them in very short order. I don't know exactly what time. I do know there's publication dates for the Gazette. Uh, they, they tend to be uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays and Mondays. So let's see what happens in the next few days. All right, you guys, enjoy. Thank you for being with me. Thank you so much. I know that you guys have been hitting my like and subscribe button because uh, we got quite a few new subscribers. And again, thank you to everybody. Those, those donations help keep this place rolling. Uh, it helps me take care of the crew and take care of the business so that we can help you and so that you can help us. So thank you very much. Enjoy your day. Once again, guys, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content. Subscribe to the channel or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.